In this video, we will highlight everything you need to know about EPF. What is EPF? What is account one and two? How to withdraw? Can I invest using the EPF? And etc. So without further ado, let's get started. So what is EPF? EPF is a compulsory retirement savings scheme created for employees from the private sector. Every month, 9 to 11% of your salary will be deducted to contribute into your EPF account and your employer will also contribute 12 to 13%. Even though EPF is not compulsory for self-employed, it is still a great retirement investment to consider. Not only you can enjoy tax reliefs up to 4,000 ringgit, your funds will also be invested by KWSB to gain dividends so that your retirement would grow even further. The past dividend rates given out by KWSB is around 5 to 6%, which is then credited into your EPF funds annually. Even though there is no fixed dividend rate, KWSB still guarantees a minimum 2.5% dividend payout, which many investments don't offer. So after you've contributed into EPF, you will be able to register for iAccount, which is an online account for EPF contributors. Inside the iAccount, you will notice that there are two types of account, which is account 1 and account 2. So what is this account 1 and account 2? Every month, our monthly contribution will be divided into these two accounts, where 70% of our contribution goes into account 1 and 30% into account 2. Account 1 is mainly to serve for your retirement needs. That means you cannot withdraw any funds from this account before age 55. While the funds in account 2 can be withdrawn if certain requirements are met. Ultimately, you will still receive the money from both of the accounts when you retire. The reason why they separated your monthly contribution into these two accounts is so that the EPF member, which is you, can have more flexibility to withdraw some of your retirement money to pay for various expenses, which we will explain further later. Now, let's start with account 1. Even though EPF do not allow any withdrawal from account 1 before retirement, they do allow the members to withdraw a portion of it to invest in the EPF approved unit trust funds. Provided if the funds from your account 1 is more than the basic savings amount that EPF has set for each age group. To look at the latest basic savings schedule, you can check it at the link down below. So how do you calculate how much you can invest from your account 1 money? Take for example, if you are 29 years old, according to the EPF basic savings schedule guide, you should have at least 31,000 ringgit in your account 1 as your basic savings. So if your account has 50,000 ringgit, you can use 30% of the excess amount to invest and that amount must be more than 1,000 ringgit in order for you to be eligible. But don't worry, you won't need to remember this formula because on the KWSP website, they do provide calculators where you can easily calculate how much you can invest. All you need to do is key in your balance in account 1, let's say 50,000, and select your age 29, then click calculate. And the amount that you can invest is 5,700. Should you use your EPF money to invest in unit trust funds? Even though EPF gives out great dividend at 5 to 6%, you can take the extra risk and invest your retirement savings in the list of EPF approved unit trust funds as they may provide a possible higher return. However, please be mindful that investment do comes with risk and your returns are not guaranteed unlike the EPF where they still provide a minimum guarantee of 2.5% annual dividend. But if you wish to explore further on the type of unit trust investments available, you could log in to your I account, select investments, fund tools, fund selectors, 
and you will be able to search all the funds that are eligible for EPF investing. If you are new to investing, you can check out our investment videos over here where we introduce the type of unit trust funds available. So where do EPF invest our money? EPF invests our money in various financial instruments like Malaysian government securities, equities, bonds, money market instruments, and real estate so that it can generate returns to grow our retirement fund. According to the annual report in 2019, EPF invested mostly in money market and fixed income instruments, but this may change from time to time depending on the market performance and the risk exposure. Now let's talk about account number two. Now for account number two, EPF do allow the members to do pre-retirement withdrawals for expenses that can help improve the comfort of our retirement. And those things are such as withdrawal to pay for housing, withdrawal to pay for medical expenses, withdrawal to pay for children higher education, and withdrawal to pay for Hajj, and finally, with full withdrawal between the age of 50 to 55. However, EPF do encourage the members not to withdraw all their account to money before they retire, because once they withdraw all of it, they will not be able to earn any more annual dividends for their account to funds. To find out how much you can withdraw from each of these categories, you can just visit your iAccount or your iAccount app and it will state how much you are eligible to withdraw from each category from your account to. Now besides account 1 and account 2, there are also other accounts such as account 55. When you reach the age of 55, your money from account 1 and account 2 will be combined into a new account which is called account 55. Members can withdraw and access into their account 55 savings at any time. They have the option to either do a lump sum withdrawal, monthly withdrawal or partial withdrawal. However, if you are the type that have bad money management, it is highly recommended to do monthly withdrawal so that your retirement fund can last as long as it can. The other type of account is account amass. For those who still work after the age of 55, you will also have another account called account amass. Account amass is for monthly contributions between the age 55 to 60 and you will not have any access to the savings in account amass until you reach the age of 60. So what are some of the other benefits of having an EPF? Members of the retirement scheme will have access to certain benefits where they or their family will receive a lump sum of money if an unfortunate event happens to them before they turn 55. The first benefit will be eligible members will receive 5,000 ringgit if they are diagnosed with total permanent disability. And the second benefit will be if the member pass away before the age of 55, 2,500 ringgit will be given to the member's beneficiary. You can check out the summary of benefits and features in our Instagram, the Financial Fitness Channel. And if you're keen to learn more about increasing your financial wealth, you can check out some of our videos right here. See you next time. Bye.